Hi everybody! Welcome to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. Today we will be discussing cash to accrual basis of accounting. At the end of the video, you should be able to explain the nature and difference between cash basis and accrual basis of accounting, calculate and prepare adjustments to convert cash basis financial statement items to accrual basis financial statement items, and convert cash basis financial statements to accrual basis financial statements. This is your lecturer, Kevin Troy M. Chua. Please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button. Comment down your questions, suggestions, and reactions. And thank you very much for trusting Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH as your online learning partner. Our featured subscriber for today is Ms. Trixie Angrabriana from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Manila. So if you want to be featured in one of our videos, just please send me a photo of you using Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons page. So Trixie Ann, thank you very much for sending your photo to me. And thank you for your support for Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons page. Okay, I think we're ready to start our lesson. Let's now talk about the cash basis of accounting. The cash basis of accounting recognizes revenue when cash is received and recognizes expenses when cash is paid, regardless of when the transaction happened. So our basic premise in the cash basis of accounting is that you only recognize revenue when we receive cash. And then you only recognize expenses when you pay cash. So we're not looking on when the transaction happened. We're only looking when does cash go in and when does cash go out. Okay, so we have some examples here. Number one, a service rendered in April in which cash collection from the customer was done in May will be recorded as revenue in May. So even though the transaction happened in April, because the cash was received only in May, it will be regarded as a revenue in May. Okay, And then we have another example here. So we have utilities expense for the month of June that was paid in July will be recorded as an operating expense for July. So the same manner that we will be using here in the cash basis of accounting is that even though the utilities expense was incurred during June, because it was paid in July, it will be recorded as an operating expense for July. So just to summarize everything in the cash basis of accounting, you will only record revenue at the time you receive any payment from your customer and you will only recognize expense when the entity pays for that expenses regardless kung kailan natin na receive yung payment ni customer and regardless if kailan magbayad ng expenses si company. That's how the cash basis of accounting looks like or how it works in the entity. Now, um, let's now discuss the accrual basis of accounting. So this is basically the thing that we've been doing for years now. Okay, you as accountancy students, this is the accru uh, this accrual basis of accounting is what you're really using in in your studies. So the ca the accrual basis of accounting recognizes revenue when the service is rendered, or in the case of merchandising and manufacturing, when the goods are sold. And they recognize expenses when it is incurred, regardless of when the cash will be received or paid. So in the accrual basis of accounting, it's more about when the transaction happened. You record it immediately. Even though cash is not yet received, or in the cases of expenses, you record it immediately even though it's not yet paid. Okay, so regardless of cash receipt, or cash payment by the entity when the transaction happens it's the time that you record it in the book of accounts so here in our example a service rendered in april in which cash collection from the customer was done in may will still be recorded as a revenue in april even though we received the payment in may okay because the transaction happened in april it's so simple okay and then for our example number two Utilities expense for the month of June that was paid in July will still be recorded as an operating expense for June because it was incurred in June. Okay, So here in the actual basis of accounting, the basic premise is that you record the transaction when they happen 
regardless of when cash is received for revenues or cash is paid for expenses. And actually, that's how we've been doing things really in accounting because it's what being um, expected of us or required for us in the conceptual framework and in the accounting standards. Okay, so later on, we'll be discussing more of that. Okay, so let me give you uh, the general features of the pure cash basis of accounting, the modified cash basis of accounting, but basically this two, pure cash and modified cash basis, falls under one, which is the cash basis of accounting, and siempre what we have also is the accrual basis of accounting. In the pure cash basis of accounting, from the word itself, pure cash basis, so what we are looking here in our transactions is cash movement. Okay? Is there an inflow of cash or is there an outflow of cash? Okay? Revenue is recorded when cash is received. That's what I've told you earlier. And then expense is recorded when cash is paid. Okay? So it, it, it looks more on the payment of cash for expenses and the receipt of cash for revenue. That's how you do it in the pure cash basis of accounting. Also, since this is purely based on cash movements, there is no capitalization of long-term assets. So if you purchase equipment, property, plant and equipment, machinery, automobile, it's just based on cash outflow. So is there a cash outflow? Then you report that cash outflow because of that purchase. There will be no capitalization of that long-term asset. And because we have no capitalization of those long-term assets, then you cannot expect an entity to record depreciation and amortization as well. And looking at the nature of depreciation and amortization, these are non-cash expenses, as you may know, right? So because there is no cash outflow in depreciation and amortization expense, then you cannot expect to be or to have those recorded under the pure cash basis of accounting. Now, there are companies which um, employs modified cash basis of accounting. The modified cash basis of accounting is a mix of the pure cash basis and the accrual basis. So let's see how a modified cash basis works. It's still based on cash movements on revenues and expenses. So basically, you only record revenue when cash is received and you only record expenses when cash is paid. However, those resources that can benefit the entity into more than one period, they are capitalized. So we are allowed now to capitalize um, building, machinery, equipment, your PPEs, okay? And because they are already capitalized, you also allow depreciation and amortization. Okay, so it's still cash basis in a sense that you record your revenues and expenses at the time of cash receipt and payment, but it becomes a bit accrual because of your depreciation and amortization and recognition of resources that can benefit benefit a more than one period. So basically, that's capitalization of assets. Okay, so that's what makes it a bit accrual. Now, um, the accrual basis of accounting relates more to what we have been doing no so revenue is recorded at the time of the transaction and expenses will be recorded at the time they are incurred and then you record them regardless of cash receipt or payment so when they happen you record it already now uh, one feature of accrual basis is that we allow the recording of receivables and payables so how does it happen if you render services or if you sell goods to customers but payment must, was not yet made by your customer, then what you do is you record a receivable. So you debit accounts receivable, you credit service revenue, or you credit sales revenue for that. And then, in any case that you have expenses but you're not yet paying for that expenses, so you debit in the expense account, but you will record it under accounts payable. So let's say, for example, utilities for the month, but you did not pay for it uh, agad agad, so you debit uh, utilities expense, and then you credit accounts payable. So it allows recording of receivables for those items that is not yet collected by the entity and payables for those items that are not yet paid for by the entity. 
Okay? And then it also recognizes the need in recording prepayments. That's with the case of your prepaid insurance. So you record it first as a prepaid expense. And then for your deferrals, like um, advance payments from your customers, so those are deferred revenues. And then accruals in a sense that you have expenses but you are not yet paying for it and you need to recognize it before the end of the accounting period or at the end of the accounting period. And then also you allow uh, recording of depreciation and amortization. So as you can see, those items about prepayments, deferrals, accruals, depreciation, and amortization, those are the things that require adjustments at the end of the accounting period. That is why we need adjusting entries under the accrual basis of accounting. Unlike in pure cash basis, that really does not need an adjusting entry because we only depend on cash inflow and cash outflow. Now, for modified cash basis, the only adjustment that you need to do is related to depreciation and amortization. But you don't have to adjust things like prepayments, defer deferrals, and accruals in the modified cash basis because revenues and expenses are still recorded once there is a cash inflow or cash outflow. So I hope that the general features of the cash basis and accrual basis of accounting is now clear to you. Now, let's move on to some more specific features based on the accounts of an enterprise. Okay, so let me present to you this table. Uh, credits to accountingtools.com. This is actually in paragraph, or no, sorry, in bullet form, but I transformed it into a table for you, for you students to understand it better. Okay, so basically in cash, you really report the face amount of cash in pure cash, modified cash basis, and accrual basis because we're talking about cash here, okay? And then for prepaid expenses or your prepayments, that's only applicable in the accrual basis of accounting. And it will not happen in pure cash or modified cash basis in a sense that when you pay for insurance, for example, or for office supplies, that already becomes an expense because there was a cash outflow. Okay, so you don't have to record any prepayments in pure cash basis or modified cash basis because at the time of payment for those insurance or office supplies, that becomes an expense already under the cash basis or modified cash basis. Unlike an accrual basis when there is an advance payment made by the company for insurance or you have office supplies, then you have to report it first as a prepaid expense because that's an asset and you need to adjust that at the end of the accounting period. Okay, and then for accounts receivable, that's only for accrual basis because in the accrual basis, you can record revenues when they happen, right? But if the payment is not yet given by the customer, then you you just have to record it under account receivable. However, we don't have account receivable in pure cash basis and modified cash basis because you only record revenue at the time of the receipt of payment from the customer. Okay, so there will not be an emergence of a receivable account for cash basis of accounting. Now for inventories, it's the preference of an entity to report inventories under the pure cash basis of accounting. And then for modified cash basis, it's entered as purchases. Okay, but in the accrual basis, you really, you really need to report it as inventory under IAS2. And then for fixed asset, for pure cash basis, that's really a no-no because when you purchase a machinery, okay, that's already a cash outflow. That's the end of story. Now, for modified cash basis, yes, you can because under the modified cash basis, as what I've described in the general features, you can record and you can capitalize fixed asset because you can also depreciate them. Okay, and then under PASS 16 of Philippine Accounting Standard 16, all of your PPE should be presented as property, plant, and equipment under the, uh, sorry, under the accrual basis of accounting. Now, the same manner with accounts receivable, we don't also have accounts payable for the cash basis because you only record expenses at the time of cash payment. But in the case that those cash payments are not yet paid for by the company and already recorded under the accrual basis, then that's the time you credit accounts payable. Okay? And then uh, it's the same manner with accruals, no? Kaya nga accrued expenses kasi it's based on the accrual basis. So we don't have any accrued expenses for the cash basis of accounting. Because again, expenses will just be recorded at the time of cash payment by the entity. 
Now, for long-term liabilities and loans, it's the entity preference to report it under the cash basis of accounting. But basically, for accrual basis, it's really required. Now, the thing here with our equity accounts, which is our share capital and retained earnings, whether the entity is using pure cash basis, modified cash basis, or accrual basis, you really need to report them. Because as you may know, share capital and retained earnings represent ownership. So whether you're using the cash basis or accrual basis, you really need to report share capital and retained earnings. Basically, equity accounts are reported in all of these bases of accounting. So I hope that makes it more understandable for you guys. Let's move forward. Okay, profit determination. So let's have a sample problem here that would show you the, the income measurement under cash basis and accrual basis of accounting. Okay. The following revenue and expense information was provided by Trixie Company for the first quarter of 2021. Okay, so an entity rendered services to a customer in January for 50,000, then February po is 60 and March is 70. Payment from January customers was received in February, then February sales, March, uh, sorry, services, service revenue, March po, and then um, payment for March customers, April. An entity also has total operating expenses for utilities, rent, and maintenance, which is 10,000 for January, 12,000 for February, and 20,000 for March. March. There was a delay in the payment of expenses. So operating expenses for January and February, they were paid in March, and then for March, they were paid in May. How much is the net income of Trixie Company under number one, the cash basis of accounting? And number two, the accrual basis of accounting for the quarter ended March 31, 2021. Since you are being asked of a net income for the quarter, you look for the coverage of the quarter. Since this is a quarter ended March 31, so this is January, February, and March. So this is how we compute your net income under the cash basis of accounting. Again, as what I've told you earlier, in the cash basis of accounting, you will be looking on cash inflows and cash outflows regardless of when the transaction happened. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, as you can see here, January customers, a payment from January customers were received in February. February is pasok in the three months of January, February, and March. So that's 50,000 January sales received during February. And then, payment for February customers were received in March. So, March is pasok in the quarter, January, February, March. So, that is 60,000, which is sales for February, or so, sorry, service revenue in February that was received in March. Okay? Now, the payment of March customers that was received in April, as you can see, April is not pasok with the uh, January, February, March. So, that's not included in our revenues for that quarter. So total revenues will equal 110,000. Now for expenses, um, January and February, which is 10 and 12,000, both of them were paid in March. So pasok po yun sa March, equaling to 22,000. Is that a correct English? Equaling? <laughs> okay, so that's equal to 22,000. But however, your 20,000 expense for March, it was paid in May. So X po yun kasi May. So that's 22,000 total expenses. So the net income under cash basis, that is 110,000 minus 22,000, that gives you 88,000. Again, uh, net income under cash basis is based only of when the revenues are received and expenses when the cash is paid. Okay, so we're not looking on the transaction date, we are looking at the payment date or uh, collection date of payments. Now, let's compare it with the accrual basis of accounting. So, dito kayo sa nai, so I think that will, this will be very easy for you. Whatever the revenue for January, February, March, regardless of receipt of payment, that's the total revenue, 180,000. And regardless of when these are paid, your expenses for January, February, and March, 10, 12, and 20,000, that is your total expense of 42,000. With a net income under the accrual basis 
of 138,000. So again, in the accrual basis of accounting, you are only looking on the transaction date when the transaction happened, regardless of cash receipt or cash payment. Now, let's have another what if in this uh, problem. Assuming Trixie Company will be closing down <laughs> Agad, okay, at the end of May. So let's assume that the whole life of the entity is from January 1, 2021 to May 31, 2021. How much is the net income for five months ended May 31? So we're now looking at the net income of the entity for the whole duration of the operation from January to May 31. Now, as you can see here in the cash basis of accounting, basically pretty much everything February, March, and April kasi we're talking about the whole five months until May. So lahat po na ilagay doon. And then for expenses, yung payment natin during March and your payment during May. So 180 minus 42, that's 138,000. Let's compare it with the accrual basis of accounting so we don't have any problem on that because the only revenues and expenses until May 31 are those revenues and expenses that happened during January, February, and March. So your net income under the accrual basis is 138,000. As you may see, the net income under cash basis for the whole life of the entity is equal to the net income under the accrual basis also for the whole life of the entity. So with that, we can assume that the net income under the cash basis of accounting and net income under the accrual basis of accounting is equal not for the whole month, not for the whole year, but I need to reiterate this for the whole life of the enterprise. Okay? It's on the whole life of the enterprise. Why can we say that sentence? It's because the only difference between the cash basis of accounting and the accrual basis of accounting is the timing of receipt of um, collection of revenues, timing as to payment of expenses. Why? In the cash basis, you only record them upon cash receipt or payment. In accrual basis, you record them when they happen. And then eventually, it will be paid for or you will receive or collect payments. So in the whole life of the enterprise, what, what we're just talking about is the timing of the recording versus the timing of cash receipt or cash payment. So the net income under cash basis is equal to the net income under accrual basis. But I need to clear that to you. It's equal on the whole life. No, not just for a certain month, not just for a certain year. It's on the whole life of the enterprise. Sir, what about uncollectible accounts expense? Now, uh, if we will be talking about uncollectible accounts, in the cash basis of accounting, you will not be able really to have an uncollectible accounts expense because you will only record revenues on the amount that you received. Now, in the accrual basis, although you can be able to record it as revenue in full, Remember, in the accrual basis of accounting, we have what you call as uh, uncollectible accounts expense. So basically what happens is that the effect is the same. However, when is the net income under cash basis not equal with the net income under accrual basis, even for the whole life of the enterprise? As you may know as well, in receivables, we have what you call allowance. So basically, those are estimations, and we really don't know if that is the exact uncollectible amount. So that's the time that the net income under cash basis will really not be equal to the net income under the accrual basis on the basis of the whole life of the enterprise. But looking at, looking at it on a subtle way, looking at it easily, yes, it's true. Because we're just talking about the timing of payments versus when they are recorded. So I hope that is clear to you <laughs> okay so let's have your first self-check self-check number one an entity received 40,000 during May for services rendered in April and paid 21,000 during June for utilities incurred during May furthermore during July, the entity received 14000 for services rendered in June and paid 6000 for expenses incurred in June. How much is the net income under cash basis? And number two, how much is the net income under the accrual basis of accounting for the quarter ended June 30? 
Okay, so you may pause the video, read the problem again, answer the problem, and play the video again if you're ready to answer. Okay, assuming that you have already answered the problem, so your answer for number one, the net income under the cash basis of accounting is 19,000. Why? We are talking about the quarter ended June 30, so ano po ang inclusive months? That's April, May, and June, okay? So, since this is under cash basis, we received the 40,000 during May, so that's included. And then we paid for the utilities during June, 21,000. So that's it, 40 minus 21, that is 19,000. What we will be doing, uh, what will we do with the 14,000 service revenue and 6,000 expense? They are paid in July, so they are not included in the quarter and the June 30, so it will not be used under the cash basis. However, under the accrual basis, when did the 40,000 revenue happen? April, the 21,000 utilities, May, and then both of the 14,000 revenue and the 6,000 expense was in June. So, lahat po sila pasok. So, in the actual basis, the answer is 27,000. Because that is 40 plus 14 for your revenues, which is 54,000. And then for expenses is 21 plus 6, which is 27. Okay? So, basically, that's pretty much how it works. Okay? So, 40 plus 14 minus 21 minus 6 will give you 27,000. Okay? So, that is our self-check number 1. We can continue with our discussion. Okay? So, let's now convert cash basis records to accrual basis records. According to International Accounting Standard 1 entitled Presentation of Financial Statements under paragraph 27, an entity shall prepare its financial statements except for cash flow information using the accrual basis of accounting. So there is really a requirement for entities who are using the international accounting standards to prepare financial statements under the accrual basis of accounting except for the statement of cash flows. Why is there an exception in the statement of cash flows? It's because... The statement of cash flows is the only financial statement prepared under the cash basis of accounting. Why? We are looking at cash inflows and cash outflows based on operating, investing, and financing activities of the entity. So basically, the SCF is really prepared under the cash basis. So there is an exception on cash flow information as told in paragraph 27. However, in totality, we shall prepare our FS using the accrual basis of accounting. So this poses the need for an entity who are recording their transactions under the cash basis of accounting to be able to convert their uh, records and basically in the preparation of their financial statements except again for cash flow information using the accrual basis of accounting. Okay, so the recognition principles and criteria set forth in the conceptual framework for financial reporting are based strictly on the actual basis of accounting. Why? If you will be reading the conceptual framework, it tells you there when to recognize cash, when to recognize, uh, sorry, when to recognize assets, when to recognize liabilities, and basically the premise in recording your assets and liabilities is strictly based on the actual basis of accounting. Okay? Now, an entity that utilizes the cash basis of accounting in their records should be able to prepare financial statements under the accrual basis of accounting. So if you're following the IAS and the backbone of it, which is the conceptual framework, then you really have to prepare your FSS using the accrual basis of accounting. So now I will be teaching you some techniques in order for you to convert your cash basis information to accrual basis financial statement items. Okay, let's first talk about your cash basis sales, transforming it into actual basis sales, gross sales. Okay, what I will be presenting here for you are the formulas that you can use in order for you to transform cash basis information to actual basis information. However, what I want you to do is to understand the equation. Why is the equation adding this or why is the equation subtracting this? I don't want you to memorize the equation just because it's a formula. It's better if you understand why it's being added and why it's being subtracted. So it will not be helpful for you if you will just be memorizing it. There's no use, okay? So 
how to convert cash basis sales to accrual basis gross sales with the different information that the entity has. Okay, so first that you will look for is any collection from customers. Okay, it's not really about accounts receivable because as you know, we don't have accounts receivable in the cash basis of accounting. But what we are referring to on the collections on accounts receivable is the collection that is uh, made by the entity from the payments that are made by their customers. So basically, these are payments by customers, collections uh, from what you are expecting from them, from the revenue that you or the service that you rendered or the goods that you have provided. Okay? Then you need to add the ending balance of accounts receivable. Okay? Why do you need to add this? Because your accounts receivable at the end of the period represents the amount that is still needed to be collected to the entity but because that is the ending balance of your receivable if you remember you can record receivable right when you already rendered service or sold goods so the ending balance of your accounts receivable also represents the revenue that was earned during the period or the services that you have rendered or the goods that you sold okay so you need to add the ending balance of accounts receivable. It's because related po siya doon sa naging revenue mo during that period. Okay? You also need to add any written off AR under the direct write-off method because you're directly crediting accounts receivable on that on the basis of accrual basis. So you need to re-add that to get your gross sales. And then you also need to re-add any sales returns and allowances and sales discount. Why do you need to re-add this to be able to go to gross sales? If you will not be re-adding this automatically, what you will be getting as endpoint is net sales. Because as you know, sales returns and allowances and sales discounts are your contra sales accounts that is being deducted into your gross sales to get net sales. So if, if you will not be re-adding this, then what you will be getting automatically is net sales. So you will not be able to get the gross sales that you should report in the statement of comprehensive income and in, in the notes to financial statements. You need to re-add them. But you deduct the beginning balance of accounts receivable because the beginning balance of accounts receivable relates to revenues that are earned in the previous period. It's just that. Kaya sa naging accounts receivable, inabuta na siya ng, ng next period. It's because you didn't collect it pa. Okay? So you need to deduct that because that's not related to any sales this period. That pertains to any sales previous period pa. Okay? So what you will be getting in there is the amount of sales on account. And then you add any sales na talagang you were able to receive it directly in cash. That is your gross sales. Now, the question is, how much is the net sales? So basically, that's gross sales minus sales returns and allowances and sales discounts. Okay, so you just basically go back to how you do it normally in case that you will be preparing your financial statements. Okay, now if you're not um, confident in using equations or formulas like this, you can analyze them using a T-account method. Actually, the equation that I presented to you earlier is just basically based basically based <laughs> on the T-account of account receivable. Why? We debit accounts receivable for any beginning balance and sales on account. And then the ending balance would still be on the debit side, right? And then we credit accounts receivable for any collection. We credit it also on sales returns and allowances and sales discount, right? And then we also credit accounts receivable under the direct write-off method on any accounts that are written off. Okay, so if you need to, to understand it better, you can also use the T-account approach. How do you do it? So your ending balance, and then you add all credits, and then you deduct the beginning balance. Again, we go back to that. Your ending balance, and then you add all of your credits, and then deduct your beginning balance, and you will be able to squeeze the amount of sales on account when you are able to squeeze your sales on account you just add your cash sales to be able to get your gross sales and then balik ka lang po doon, gross sales minus sales returns and allowances and sales discounts that is your net sales okay so i hope that uh, with that uh, analysis you can be able to transform your cash basis sales to accrual basis gross sales later we will be having problems and computations so that you can understand it better 
Okay, let's now move on to cash basis purchases to accrual basis purchases. You start with any payments that you made for those accounts payable or purchases that you are not yet paying for. Basically, the entity pays for it. So you, so you record any payment and then you add any ending balance of accounts payable. Like in accounts receivable, the concept is the same. The ending balance of accounts payable includes any of your purchases made during the period. So the ending balance of your accounts payable relates to purchases itself. However, I need to be clear on this. Your accounts payable might have other items like utilities or um, your rent payable na hindi pa bayad. Sometimes you lodge it also in accounts payable. So you need to look at the problem very well. If your accounts payable only relates to the purchases or accounts payable is also being used in different kinds of expenses. So you need to look for that. But basically, if the problem is silent and there, if there's no other information, then I think your accounts payable only relates to purchases. Okay, and then you also need to re-add your purchase returns and allowances and your purchase discount, but you need to deduct the beginning balance of your accounts payable. Again, because the beginning balance of your accounts payable relates to all of the purchases that you made in the previous period. It's just that inabuta na lang siya as beginning balance because hindi pa siya bayad. Okay, so using that equation, you can get your total purchases on account and then you add any cash purchases and you can get your gross purchases and then basically that's how it goes gross purchases and then you deduct purchase returns and allowances and purchase discount you know yun, yung net purchases sir what about freight in okay so uh, ganito, no? if the problem is silent we can assume that freight in is already included in the payments however if the problem specifically states that freight is paid for separately more so if it's fob shipping point then you also need to re-add it to get your gross purchases but if you already add it to get your gross purchases that's the time you just have to deduct again pra and pd because the freight is already included in the purchases and as you know under international accounting standard 2 any cost in bringing the inventory in its present location and condition should be added as cost of the inventory so basically freight in should have an effect in the amount of the purchases you have which is total purchases before you deduct your pra and your pd to get your net purchases okay so check if the problem has information regarding freight charges but if it doesn't have then you don't have to worry about it If you're not confident with that, you can also use the T-account method, okay? So, your debits to accounts payable include the payments and then any purchase returns and allowances and purchase discount. And then the credits are the beginning balances and then any purchases that you had on account and then ending balance. This is on the assumption that the accounts payable T-account or ledger is only being used for purchases but you need to check if the accounts payable is also used for utilities rent maintenance salaries okay so check nyo mabuti yun. so how do you do it Ganun then your ending balance i'll add all of your uh, debits and then deduct your credit you will be squeezing out your purchases on account then that's the time you add your cash purchases to get the total amount of your gross purchases okay that's it basically another thing with freight is that sometimes oh no most of the time freight is paid directly in cash eh? diba? so sometimes it really really not affect your accounts payable na diba? so those are the things that you need to check also in your problem no if freight is included or not and if freight is naka accounts payable then or diretso siyang cash payment Kasi kung diretso siyang cash payment, tignan nyo kung nirecord ba siya ng entity properly as an inventory or baka naka-expense yung freight in. And remember, freight in should not be recorded as, as an expense because it is an addition to the cost of inventory. So you need to check that as well. Okay, so please apply International Accounting Standard 2 inventories in transforming cash basis purchases to accrual basis purchases so that the amount of the purchases that you will get is really the correct one.
that is needed in the accrual basis of accounting. I hope that we're, we're clear on that. Okay. Next is depreciation for the period. Okay, so for depreciation, actually, it's only a squeezing out technique. Let me show you. So the net amount of your property, plant, and equipment at the beginning of the period. So basically, we're talking about net. Again, that's NET. So that's net. Big sabihin po, this is your PPE less accumulated depreciation. Okay? And then, you add the cost of the new asset that was purchased. And then you deduct the carrying value of the asset disposed. And because it's carrying value, that is asset cost of the asset disposed minus accumulated depreciation. Okay? And then you also deduct the depreciation for the period. We can directly deduct the depreciation here because your PPE is presented net of the accumulated depreciation. Okay, then that's you. Uh, that's where you get the ending balance of your property, plant, and equipment. Now, for the depreciation for the period, it's actually a squeezing out technique because it's in the central portion of the equation. So what you do is, if you're going up, you reverse the equation. So net PPE ending plus carrying value of asset disposed minus the cost of new asset purchase minus the net PPE at the beginning of the period. What you will be getting in your calculators is a negative amount because you are looking for a depreciation which is being deducted to get the ending balance of your PPE. Okay? So that's how you do it. Now, in case that you are not um, comfortable with this equation, then you can also use AT account approach. But in this approach, your PPE should already be net of accumulated depreciation. So the beginning balance, and then you add the cost of the new purchase PPE, then you deduct the carrying value of the PPE disposed, and then you deduct the depreciation for the period, and you get your ending balance. You squeeze it out, and you can get your depreciation for the period okay now in any case that the entity has a proper record of their uh, depreciation this is how you do it okay so you the beginning balance of your accumulated depreciation and then you add the depreciation for the period but you deduct any accumulated depreciation in any asset disposal then that is the accumulated depreciation at the end of the period Okay, so you squeeze it out and you can get the depreciation for the period. And again, if you're not comfortable with that, you can also apply the T account approach. Okay, so uh, um, we debit the accumulated depreciation account on the um, accumulated depreciation of the asset disposed. And then we credit accumulated depreciation basically on the amount of depreciation for the period. Okay, you just also squeeze it out and you can get the depreciation for the period. I hope that you understand why these uh, equations are computed as such. Okay? Let's now move on to your cash to accrual basis operating expenses. Okay. So, this is where your basic accounting knowledge comes in. More so about adjusting entries. Okay, dito po siya papasok. That's why for my students, I um, uh, required you to go back to your adjusting entries because you need it here. You need the concepts here. Okay, but let me teach you the techniques. That's how we do it. Okay, so basically in the cash basis of accounting, what we report as operating expense are the amounts that we pay for, right? Kung ano yung binayad talaga that becomes your operating expense under the cash basis of accounting. Now, what amount of operating expense shall we present under the accrual basis? This is how we do it. So first is you will be adding the beginning balance of any prepayment. Why? We can deem or we can assume that this amount of prepayment Basically, at the beginning of the period, at the end of the period, siya po ay magiging expired na. Because at the end of the period, we can check naman eh, what amount is still prepaid, what amount is still asset, what amount is still unexpired. So, for the meantime, add mo muna lahat. Because 
you can have the thinking that okay, this might be expired na at the end of the period. Basically, we can check naman at the end of the period kung magkano pa yung unexpired portion. So add mo muna, okay? Then you also add any accrued expenses naman at the end of the period. Why is it like this? Remember that accruals are, you recognize the expense na, pero hindi pa siya bayad. Now, if this accrued expense is at the end of the period, then it represents an expense really at this period, right? So you need to add it to represent that there is also a portion of expense that you need to record based on that accrual. Because in that accrual, at the end of the period, that represents an expense during that period, di ba? However, you need to deduct any ending balance of prepaid expense. Why? An ending balance of your prepaid expense means that is the unexpired portion of your prepayment. And as you know, in adjusting entries, the unexpired portion of your prepayment is reported in the balance sheet as an asset. So this is an asset. This is not an expense. Kaya kailangan mo ibawas kasi hindi siya expense. Yun yung sinasabi ko kanina na you can freely add the beginning balance of your prepaid expense on the assumption na okay, it might be uh, expired na at the period because in the equation din naman, you can check if there is still an unexpired portion. And tama nga tayo, pwede mo i-deduct yun. Diba? Para ang lalabas, yung purong expense lang na expired portion. Diba? Okay. And then, you can deduct naman po the accrued expenses at the beginning of the period. Now, accrued expenses at the beginning of the period are expenses that are not yet paid for, but those are expenses from the last or from the previous accounting period. So basically, the beginning balance of your accrued expense is hindi po siya expense ngayong period na to. Okay? So, you can deduct the beginning balance of your accrued expense. Then you just uh, go with that equation and you can get the accrual basis operating expense. Okay? So, pwede nyo siyang kabisaduhin lang like um, kabisote style, but I don't recommend that. You need to understand why it's being added and why it's being subtracted. Okay? Or, you can maybe memorize it kabisotically. <laughs> Kabisote style. But you should, I uh, know, I'm requiring you that you should understand why these things are added, why these things are subtracted. Okay? That will be more helpful for you. Okay. And then let's now move on to your other revenues other than your service revenue or sales as what we are uh, talking about earlier. No, Other revenues like rent revenue or interest revenue so it, it goes like that okay so you start with any cash receipt that you had during the period basically those cash receipts are reported as revenue in cash basis because you yun yun receive mo eh. so that's the revenue under cash basis the first thing that you need to add is the beginning balance of deferred revenue because you can't like so parang kanina lang din you can assume na yung unearned revenue mo at the beginning of the period baka at the end of the period earned na siya basically you can check naman at the end of the period how much of these unearned revenue is still unearned diba so pwede ka magdedak ng ganun mamaya Okay? And then you also add any accrued revenue at the end of the period because if you have an accrued revenue at the end of the period, that relates to a revenue earned this period that is not yet collected. So basically, that's a revenue for this period. You need to add it to get the revenue under accrual basis. However, you need to deduct the ending balance of your deferred revenue because the ending balance of unearned revenue is not yet earned. And if it is not yet earned, it is a liability. It's not a revenue. So you deduct it. Okay? And then you also deduct the beginning balance of your accrued revenue. Why? The beginning balance of your accrued revenue refers to any revenues that were earned in the previous period. It's just that inabutan na lang siya ng new accounting period kaya nagkaroon ka ng beginning balance ng accrued revenue. But those are revenues for the previous accounting period, not today. Okay, so it will also be deducted and that gives you your accrual basis other revenues. Okay, so I hope that you understand the concepts behind these equations. 
Okay? And then last calculation that I'll be teaching you is the capital maintenance approach of calculating profit. Okay? So the capital maintenance approach of calculating profit, actually, you have been doing this since first year, but you just don't know that it's called capital maintenance approach. Okay? So this is how you do it. The equity at the end of the period, you deduct it with the equity at the beginning of the period. So that is your change in equity, increase or decrease in equity. You add back any withdrawals and you deduct your additional investments. So I think you are already familiar with this. And that will be your profit for the period or loss for the period. Depende kung ang lalabas ay positive or negative. So those are our um, equations that will be helpful for your adjustments and calculations for the conversion of your records from cash basis to accrual basis. Let's have another self-check. Okay, self-check number two. Which of the following simplified equations would help determine the amount of purchases on account during the period? Okay, so ang tinatanong po sa inyo is purchases on account. So letter A. Purchase discount plus purchase returns and allowances. Letter B, accounts payable payments plus accounts payable ending plus contra purchases minus AP beginning. Letter C, accounts payable payments plus accounts payable ending plus contra purchases plus accounts payable beginning. Or letter D, accounts payable payments plus accounts payable ending. Pause the video if you need more time to think about it. Then play the video again if you're ready for the um, answer. Okay, assuming that you have already uh, analyzed and you already have the answer, the correct answer is letter B. Okay, so you the payments that you have, you add back the accounts payable ending because it represents any purchases that you did this period. Then you add back also your contra purchases, so you will get the gross amount of your purchases, but you deduct the accounts payable beginning because that is related to the previous accounting period. And now let's move on to our discussion of problems for you to have a more deeper understanding of the equations that we have presented earlier. Let's have problem number one. Cream Company uses the cash basis of accounting and reported total revenues of 185,000, which represents cash sales of 100,000 and collection from customers of unpaid balances of 85,000. Cream Company would have to prepare its income statement for the year ended December 31, 2021 and came up with the following information. <coughs> Excuse me. Accounts receivable at January 1 amounts to 36,650 while at December 31 amounts to 26,350. Accounts written off amounts to 4,500. Returns and allowances allowed for sales amounted to 2,000, while discounts granted was 1,500. How much gross sales and net sales will be reported in the Statement of Comprehensive Income under the accrual basis for the year ended December 31, 2021? So as you can see, you have here your cash basis information, and then you were also given information to transform it to accrual basis. Okay? So this is how we do it. You first include any collection on accounts receivable, which is ito po yun, the collection from customers of unpaid balances of 85,000. Then the, as what I've told you earlier, you add your accounts receivable balance at the end of the period, which is 26,350, because that represents the sales that you made this period, although it's not yet collected. So you need to add it. And then you also add any accounts receivable written off, which is 4,500. And you need to re-add your contra sales, which is sales returns and allowances and sales discount of 1,500. But this is the time that you need to deduct any beginning balance of your accounts receivable, which is 36,950, because these are the receivables that represents revenue from the previous accounting period. So, with that, you will be getting your total sales on account of 82,400. 
Okay, and then you just add your cash sales, which is 100,000. And this gives you your gross sales under the accrual basis of accounting of 182,400. Now, for the question about net sales, this is how you do it. So your gross sales of 182,400. And then you deduct your sales returns and allowances of 2,000. And also your sales discount of 1,500. This will give you your net sales of 178,900. Okay, so that is your answer for problem number one. Okay, now if you're not into this equation, you can also analyze it using this T account. Okay, so as you can see, the beginning balance of your AR is 36,950, and then I just plotted all of the credits to accounts receivable, which is your collection, accounts written off. SRA and SG. Okay, so from your beginning balance, add back all of your credits, then deduct the beginning balance, and you can squeeze out your sales on account. And then you just simply add the cash sales, which is 100,000, and you will get the same amount, which is 182,400. But you deduct your sales returns and allowances and discounts with a total of 3,500. Your net sales will still be the same, 178,000. So, you have already transformed from the cash basis revenues of 185,000, the actual gross sales is 182,400, which will be reported in your statement of comprehensive income. Okay? So, that is problem number one, and we move forward to problem number two. Shin Company uses the cash basis of accounting and reported total inventory purchases of 112,000 which represent cash purchases of 49,000 and payments to suppliers of unpaid balances of 63,000. Shin Company would have to prepare its income statement for the year ended December 31, 2021 and came up with the following information. Accounts payable at January 1 is 28,750 while at December 31 is 12,4. Returns and allowances on purchases amounted to 3,6 while discount is 1,8. So we are being asked of the gross purchases and net purchases that will be presented in the statement of comprehensive income. So like what we did earlier, you start naman with the payments on accounts payable. And then, ang related sa kanya is the ending balance of your accounts payable because it includes the purchases that are not yet paid. But this is a purchase this year. Okay, and then you add back your contra purchases, which is your sales returns and uh, sorry, purchase returns and allowances and sale and purchase discount. Okay, which is three six and one eight. And then you deduct the beginning balance of your accounts payable, which is twenty eight thousand seven hundred fifty, and you get your total purchases of account of forty two thousand fifty. And then you add your cash purchases of 49,000 to be able to get your gross purchases under the accrual basis which is 101,050. Now coming from that you can just simply deduct from your gross purchases your contra purchases which is purchase returns and allowances and your purchase discount and you get your net purchases of 95,650. So that is your solution for problem number two. If you are not confident in the equation, you can also use the T-account method in which you can squeeze out your purchases on account by adding the beginning balance to the credits and deducting it to the beginning balance. So that is your purchases on account. And then you just again simply add the cash purchases to get your gross purchases and deduct your contra purchases with a total of 5,400, which is your PRA and your PD. That is your net purchases, 95,650. And that is your answer for problem number two. We can now proceed to problem number three. Hey Company has a net PPE balance of 5,230,000 as at January 1, 2021. During the year, a new PPE was purchased costing 1,500,000. However, a PPE was sold with a selling price of 900,000 and a carrying value of 750,000. It was determined that the net PPE balance at the end of the year amounts to 5,643,500. How much is the depreciation expense for the year? 
So you will be doing a squeezing method. So you just follow the equation that I gave you earlier, but then we are looking for the, the central part of the equation, gitna po, which is the depreciation for the period. Okay, so what you need to do is you go upwards. So that's 5,643,500. Add back the carrying value, which is 750,000. So you will not be using the 900,000 here because that is a selling price. What we require is the carrying value. So that is 750,000. And then you add the cost of the new asset purchase. Sorry, you deduct. And then you deduct also the 5,220,000. And you will be getting the depreciation for the period of 336,500. Okay, so that is your solution for problem number three. You just go backwards. So pagka pa add, deduct mo siya. Kapag ka naman po pa, pa deduct siya, add mo po siya. Okay, so that's how you do it. Okay, we proceed with problem number four. Happy Company reported cash basis operating expenses of 45,600 for insurance and 89,000 for salaries for 2021. The entity would have to convert records and statements to actual basis again for 2021. Ang premise kasi, syempre last year, nag-release sila ng FS, naka-actual basis. Kaso ang sistema talaga ng company, cash basis. No? So, we need additional information to transform it. Parang ganon. Okay? It was certain that in the accrual basis statements made for last year, so basically this is your beginning balance, the prepaid insurance is 12000 and accrued salaries is 18000 However, upon checking records, it was determined that the unexpired portion of your insurance at the end of the period is 6500 and there are still unpaid salaries amounting to 23000 We are being asked of the accrual basis operating expenses relating to insurance and salaries for 2021 that will be presented in the December 31, 2021 Statement of Comprehensive Income. Okay, so this is how you do it. The first thing that you need to do is make a column. <laughs> for insurance and salaries okay and then the first thing that you list down is the cash basis expense these are your expenses under the cash basis of accounting okay so the first thing that you need to do is you add the beginning balance of prepaid insurance which is 12,000 bakit nga po uli? we can assume that those will be expired at the end of the period Eventually naman, malalaman natin pa rin kung magkaroon pa rin naman yung un unexpired, di ba? Okay. And then you deduct any accrued expenses for the end of the year. So at the end of the year, meron pa daw pong unpaid salaries na 23,000. So you need to add that as well because that 23,000 represents a salary this period that is not yet paid. Okay, so you need to add that to get an operating expense because those 23,000, pasaho din talaga yan, yun nga lang, hindi pa bayad. E kaso, hindi siya naisama sa operating expenses under the cash basis because you only record salaries expense of 89,000 because yun yun lang yung binayad. But in the accrual basis, you need to add that because that is a salary for this period. Okay? And then, you deduct any ending balance of your prepayment because any ending balance of your prepayment is not an expired asset. Okay? That is an asset. That is an unexpired insurance pa. So, you deduct mo yung 6,500 na unexpired insurance kasi asset po yan, hindi po yan expense. Okay? And then, you deduct also the accrued expense at the beginning of the period which is 18,000 because those relate to salaries last year. It's just that inabutan na siya ng bagong accounting period na unpaid. No? So, yung 18,000 na yan, it's not a salary for this year. Hindi lang siya paid nung nag-start yung accounting period. Okay? So, it, <coughs> excuse me. So, that 18,000 does not relate to any salary this 2021. Okay? So, you just perform the equation. <coughs> Excuse me, nagagaragal. Okay. So, you just have to perform the equation and you get the accrual basis operating expense. So, for insurance, it's 51,100, which is 45,600 plus 12 minus 6,500. Okay. And then, for salaries, it's 89 plus 23 minus 18 gives you 94,000. 
Paano ko po mapaprove na tama po itong pinagagawa natin? Balik tayo sa concepts nyo ng basic accounting. Okay, first for insurance. Now, the beginning balance of your insurance according to the problem is 12,000. Okay? And then, payments made during the year, which is basically kung ano yung insurance na binayad for additional insurance during that year. Yun po yung 45,600. However, we determine that the expired portion of the insurance or your operating expense is 51,100. So, your prepaid insurance at the end of the period is 6,500. Now, that 6,500 represents your prepaid expense at the end of the period. So, tama lang po, di ba? Nagtugma siya. So, tama tayo, ibig sabihin. Now, regarding to salaries naman po, you started the period with unpaid salaries of 18,000 daw po, di ba? Now, uh, the salaries for the period according to your accrual basis uh, expenses, it's 94,000. However, what you only paid for under the cash basis, kasi yan nga lang daw po talaga yung binayad, is 89,000. So, the unpaid salaries at the end of the year is 23,000. So, lalabas po yun, ito po yun, yung unpaid salaries which is 23,000. So, um, if you are doubting if this um, equation is incorrect or maybe you're not confident that you have uh, uh, computed it correctly, um, after doing this, you can do this and this so that you can know if you have um, or if you have complete, uh, computed it correctly. Okay, so that is our answer for problem number four. We proceed with problem number five. Crunch Company reported cash basis other revenues of 50,000 for rent, so nagpaparenta din po sila and 18,000 for interest for 2021. The entity would have to convert records and statements to accrual basis again for 2021. Now, the beginning balances daw po is unearned rent is 20,000 and accrued interest is 8,000. Beginning of the period. Upon further checking of records, at the end of the period daw po, ang unearned pa natin is 15,000 and indeed pa daw po natin na receive yung interest na amounting to 6,000 in form of cash. Compute for the accrual basis other revenues related to rent and interest that will be presented in the December 31, 2021 Statement of Comprehensive Income. So we're talking about rent and interest. The first thing also that you need to list down is the cash receipts that had happened. So that's 50,000 for rent and 18,000 for interest. Okay? Now, First is, you add the deferred revenue at the beginning of the period because, again, we can assume that the unearned revenue at the beginning of the period might be earned na at the end of the period. Eventually, we can check kung earned na ba talaga or hindi. Parang ganon. So, the beginning balance is 20,000, so you need to add that. Okay? And then, you also add any accrued revenue at the end of the period because this 6,000 represents an interest revenue this year. Yun nga lang, accrued revenue pa siya. Ibig sabihin, hindi pa na -re receive But you also need to add that to get the total amount of revenue that you have really earned this period. Okay? Because that is the ending balance of your accrued revenue because it's related to an interest revenue this year. You need to add it. Okay? And then you deduct the deferred or unearned revenue at the end of the period. Why? An unearned revenue at the end of the period means hindi pa siya na earn. So kung hindi pa siya na earn, hindi siya revenue. At hindi siya revenue dahil liability siya. At dahil hindi siya revenue, you need to deduct it. Okay? So you need to deduct the unearned rent, still unearned, 15,000. And you also need to deduct any beginning balance of unearned revenue, oh sorry, of accrued revenue because this 8,000, ito po yun, that relates to a revenue, interest revenue last year na inabutan na lang ng new accounting period na hindi mo pa nakakolekta. But since it is not a revenue related to this year, you need to deduct it. Perform the mathematical calculations and you can get your accrual basis revenue. So that is 50 plus 20 minus 15, that gives you 55,000. And 18 plus 6 minus 8, that gives you 16,000. 
Now, again, if you're not confident in using this, you can check your answers using the basic accounting approach. So, the beginning balance of your unearned rent revenue is 20000 And then you add any advance payment that you receive from your customer, which is 50000 and then, according to your accrual basis computation, the accrual basis revenue is 55000 So, you need to deduct that to get your ending balance of unearned rent revenue, which is not still earned, of 15000 Ito po yun, yung hindi pa daw po na earn. And then, for your interest, this is how you do it. So, your beginning balance of interest receivable, which is 8000 and then you add the interest but not yet received, which is 16,000 according to your accrual basis records. But you already received 18,000. Ito po yun. Na received na daw po natin yung 18,000. So the interest receivable at the end of the period is ito po yung accrued interest at the end of 2021, 6,000. So na prove natin na tama po yung na compute natin na accrual basis revenues on rent and interest. Okay, so that is your solution for problem number five. And we move forward with our last problem, which is problem number six. Tech company for 2021 has total equity of 463000 at the start of the year and 520000 at the end of the year. Withdrawals made by the owner is 12000 and additional investments made during the year total 18000 Using the capital maintenance approach, how much is the profit or loss for 2021? Okay, so this is just actually a basic accounting approach that you know. It's just that it's the first time that you heard it, I suppose, that it's called capital maintenance approach. So you start with the equity at the end of the period, which is 520000 and then you deduct the beginning to get the increase or decrease in equity. Okay, and then you add back any withdrawals made and you subtract any additional investment to get your profit for the period of 51000 To prove that it's correct, let's use the approach with the use of the statement of changes in equity. So, your beginning capital plus additional investment plus profit that we computed minus withdrawals, that's your equity at the end of the period, 520000 so, nagtugma lang sila. Again, that is called the capital maintenance approach in calculating profit. Okay, so those are our problems for today. Let's have some self-check for you to test your knowledge. Self-check number three. Cash payments collected from customers during the year is 64000 if the beginning balance of accounts receivable is 120,000 and the ending balance is 80,000, how much is the sales on account during the period? So I'm I'm only asking about the sales on account, hindi po total gross sales, okay? So letter A 64,000, letter B 136,000, letter C 24,000 or letter D 104,000. Pause the video if you need to more more time to answer the problem and then play it again if you're ready. Okay, the correct answer is letter C, 24,000. So you just have your 80,000 added back to the 64,000 and then you deduct 120,000. Okay, so that's 80 plus uh, 64 minus 120 that gives you a sales on account of 24,000. Okay, so that is your self-check three. Let's continue with self-check number four. The accrual basis income statement presents insurance expense of 35,000. If at the beginning of the period, prepaid insurance amounts to 15,000 and 6,000 at the end of the period, how much was paid for additional insurance policies during the year? Or uh, if we will be restating the question, how much is the cash basis insurance expense? Okay. So letter A is 26,000, B 35,000, C 41,000 or D 46,000. Pause the video if you need more time and play it again when you're ready. Okay, the correct answer is 26,000. So in order for you to check on that, so your 6,000 ending balance, you add back the 35,000, then you deduct 15. So 6 plus 35 minus 15 that gives you 26,000. Okay, so you can just use the basic accounting approach for this one. 
Let's move on with self-check 5. This is our last self-check. Okay, so medyo hirapan natin ng konti. Cash received from rentals amounted to 4,000. The following information was made available. So meron kang beginning and ending balances ng unearned rent and rent receivable. How much rent revenue will be presented in the accrual basis financial statements? A, 5,000. B, 6,000. C, 7,000. D, 8,000. Pause the video if you need more time and play it again when you're ready. Okay, so the correct answer is letter D, 8,000. Paano po nakuha? Okay, so this is how we do it, no? Your cash basis rent revenue is 4,000. Now, applyan natin ang konsepto. Unearned rent ng January 1. That might be earned at the end of the period. Eventually, we can check if it's really earned. So, you add your 6,000. Now, at the end of the period, unearned is 1,000. So, it's not yet earned. It's not yet a revenue. You need to deduct it. And then, for your rent receivable at the beginning of the period, it's a rent receivable at the beginning, which means that is a rent receivable relating to a previous period revenue. So, it's not for this year. So, you deduct 3,000. And then, we have a rent revenue of 2,000 at the end of the period that represents a revenue this year. So, you need to add your 2,000. Okay? So, you will get 8,000. So, that's 4 plus 6 minus 1 minus 3 plus 2. 8,000. And that has been our discussion for cash to accrual basis of accounting. Again, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button. Comment down your questions, suggestions, and reactions. This has been Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and to God be all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you and have a great day. Sarang eo.